What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be taking a look at using DXVK here on Silent Hill 2 on the Ally and the Legion Go to fix the graphical issues it has with DX12 when you're not using ray tracing and the lighting that doesn't load in properly. Most of us are pretty familiar with this and this is just another way to kind of get around that. A lot of you have asked for this guide and also it's a way to kind of play around with other games if you want to test with performance or other glitches or things you're trying to fix. But we'll use this game as the main example here since we all have had trouble recently with this one. So here on the Legion Go, I haven't done this yet with DXVK and on the ally I have and in my settings I still have the full DX12 suite here I have frame generation ray tracing FSR 3.1 and all that but of course with RT off we gain performance but lose the proper lighting and the game looks pretty rough now over on the ally x here I've done the fix already and of course we're missing those DX12 features so just keep that in mind the way we're running this game certainly isn't going to be the way you'd be running it on DX12 with all the features but you can see the difference here of what it looks like uh, visual wise I have settings are different for FPS but visual wise um, what the game is supposed to be looking like when you play it and it works really well here you can see on the Vulkan API right here running uh, DX11 being wrapped around DXVK and running here uh, really well on the ally and on the go we get a few more hiccups and stuff here and there but of course before that was fixed we had pretty rough looking game in comparison so yeah I wanted to get in and take a look at that now on the legion goes where we'll do this guide it's the same on any z1 extreme windows device you may be using like the ally ally x or whatever and you can see we still have the full suite here which i personally do prefer running the game with dx12 just ray tracing frame gen 3.1 has been good but this is just another way for fixing the game and not running ray tracing or dx12 or any of that now you are going to need the dxvk uh, download here i'll have the link in the description for you to get over to their github website you're going to grab the newest release here so we're going to go down and just click on this to download the 241 right here it'll be a really quick small easy download so once that's done we can close out of the browser we're not going to need anything else this is a really simple process we're now going to go into our downloads and we want to extract that folder that we just downloaded from github so we'll select that extract all and we'll go ahead and get this extracted again pretty quick and easy process you're just going to need a couple of files out of here that we're going to copy and paste over and a property in steam so we're, here's our extracted folder you have x32 and 64 bit so if you're running a 32 bit game which isn't silent hill 2 but if you want to try these fixes with other games or performance you've got dx11 and 10 and 9 and all that in here for 32 bit games we're going to use the 64 bit version here for silent hill and we're using DirectX 11. so we're going to grab these bottom two files right here I'm going to highlight these two and we're going to go ahead and copy these. Don't cut them or whatever. Keep them in here because you're going to need these if you're messing around later on. But go ahead and copy these and then we can close all of that out. We're going to go back over to Steam where we have Silent Hill 2 installed. We're going to go over to the gear icon here in the game and bring up manage and then browse local files. And that'll open up the game folder here. Now, for me on my go right now, I'm on C drive, program files 86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Silent Hill 2. If you've installed this somewhere else, you have to find your game file uh, on there and then you don't want to put the files right here you want to find wherever the game's exe files at in this case it's this sh proto right here that we want to go into and then binaries win 64 and then right in here is actually our game exe this is where we launch from and everything so that's where we want to paste the two files that we copied and this is going to be the case for any other game you may be experimenting with wherever your exe is at wherever it launches from you're going to want to put the files you need in there and that's it and if you want to take away that fix or that change to the x11 just simply delete those two files out and close the file folder again so with those in there we just need to make this game launch in direct x11 so that kicks in properly so we're going to go into the game's properties here with that gear icon and we're going to type in dash dx11 pretty simple and that's going to force the game in steam here to boot up in dx11 which is then going to get wrapped in dxvk in the vulcan api so we can close that out and we can go ahead and launch into the game here which previously wasn't fixed here on the go but now once we get into it boom everything loads in property and you can see we are on vulcan here for the api and so we're not going to have those dx um 12 direct x12 features we're not going to have rt 
We're not going to have FSR 3.1 or in-game frame gen, which actually works really well now in the game that they've updated it uh, and that type of thing. But if you wanted to go around uh, this way to do the fix without having to run RT, gain the additional performance and all that, this is just another option. But not just that, not just for Silent Hill 2. I wanted to also just show this in, you know, because it could be used for other games, whether it be you just want to experiment with performance or it's fixing problems like this until official patches. It can be really useful. Useful. So this is something I would keep in my back pocket and experiment with and try with other games and I'm sure I'll cover this more here on the channel showing it either fixing other games or maybe we'll compare performance of just running you know the way the game's intended versus maybe running the DXVK wraparound or DX11 and that type of thing. But yeah it definitely fixes the issue. There are going to be still some stutters and issues with performance but overall brings the game up to looking the way it should and giving you at least decent performance that you can play on the devices. Who knows how the mileage will go for everybody. It can always vary. This is workarounds and wraps and stuff like that to make this work. So I can never guarantee performance or success, but it's easy to do and easy to undo. And it might be worth it for you either in Silent Hill 2 here on these devices or in other games. All right. Anyways, guys, hopefully this helps you out. Thanks a lot for coming and check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.